Hello folks, welcome back. In this video, you will learn how to connect to an API using Power Automate and how to retrieve the API data and then how to process that data into a SharePoint list. So stay tuned and let's go to the demo after this short intro. I'm on a SharePoint side. So let's look at the API first. So if I go to uh, the datausa.io, you can see there's a lot of data available on various different sectors. So down here, if I click on API, there are some data sources which are available for the API. So you can choose any for your testing. If I go to API, I can see an example API, which is a population data. So if I just go through this, so data is nation, ID, the nation is country name, and then we have a year, and then we have population. So what we'll do is we'll try to get the nation and the year and the population. So these three columns we need in our SharePoint list. So let's go ahead and create a SharePoint list. So here on a SharePoint side, I will click on new and list, and then I will select blank list. I will give this list a name and just call it population data and create. Now the title, we can use it for the country name, but the rest of the two columns we need, one is the year and the other one is the population, the number. So for year column, we'll create a number column. So we'll call it year. We can create another number column, which is the actual population. So we'll create a population column and hit save. Now we have three columns. If I go back to this API, and if I just copy this and paste it in the URL, we retrieve this result. So it is going, so the latest year is 2019. It is showing in the API and it goes all the way back to year 2013. So it will give us the number of people living in this country year on year analysis. So I will navigate to Power Automate Flow now. Let me copy this link. So I will navigate to Power Automate Flow. From the left hand menu, I will click on Create. I will just create an instant cloud flow so I can trigger and test it. I will give this flow a name. We'll just call it Get API Data and manually trigger the flow. Click on Create. So the first step in this flow is going to be an HTTP action. So if I click on New Step and type HTTP, so HTTP action. So you can see this is a premium feature. So you have to have a premium flow license to use this feature. So if I click on this HTTP, so the method is going to be get because we're retrieving the information. The URI, I've just copied that URI, so I'm just pasting that here. I don't need to provide anything in the header, but if I go into show advanced option, now this API, which we are seeing here is public to anyone, but if you are trying to access a different API, you need to provide an authentication mechanism here. So for this demo, we don't need to provide this authentication because this API is public. So this will connect and get the information from this API. Next step is we need to pass this JSON file. So this API is in JSON format. We need to pass it. So next step is going to be a data operation. So if I select data operation, all these data operations are available. We're looking for pass JSON. So if I click on that, the content is going to be the body of that HTTP request. So that's the body and the schema, we can create schema, but we can also generate from the sample. So if I go back to the data sample, if I highlight all the data and right click and copy. Now, if I go back to the workflow and click on generate from sample. So if I click on that and click control V for my keyboard to paste the information here and then click on done. Now this will generate the schema itself based on the sample data. So that's so easy to create. Now this will give us the data. The next step is we need to create record in the SharePoint list. So we have already created this population data list, which has title, year and population. If I go back to the flow, the next step will select create item. SharePoint, I will select a site. So it is a training site and the list name is population data. For the title, I'm going to save the nation, which is the country name. Now you can see it automatically added, applied to each. So the workflow know that this JSON have more than one set of data in there. So it can iterate through it and create multiple records. And then in the year, I will select ID year. And then for the population, I will select the population from the parser JSON. Okay, so let's review this. So we are manually triggering the flow. First, we create an HTTP request where we are getting the information from the API. If there's any authentication mechanism, we need to provide that here. 
Then we pass that JSON, putting the body of the HTTP in here and generated this schema from the JSON sample file we are processing. And then we did apply to each loop and created multiple record in SharePoint list. So let's click on save. Okay, so the flow is saved. If I go back to the list and show you the list is empty at the moment. So now let's navigate to the flow and run it. So from the right hand side, if I click on test and then I will manually run the flow and click on test again. I need to sign in to give permission to the SharePoint site. Okay, so I'll click continue and then finally I will click on run flow and then done. Now the flow is running so it actually took only a couple of seconds to run it because there are only a few records to process. So if I go back to the training site now and if I refresh this site, so now you can see there is title year and population for each year all the way from 2013 to 2019 whichever were present in this api json file it is actually processed and created a record in a sharepoint list okay so using this http request you can actually connect to any api the mechanism is same you might need to have a different configuration or different headers need to go in there or you need to provide the authentication method for the API. So to just wrap up this video, in this video you have learned how to connect to an API using Power Automate flows and how to retrieve the API data and how you can process that data and save it to a SharePoint list. Thank you very much for watching this video. Consider subscribing if you are new to the channel by pressing the red subscribe button below this video and click the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos as I upload new videos every week. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. If you have any question regarding this topic or any other query related to Office 365, put in the comment section below. I review the comments on a daily basis. I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.